Hello everyone! Today I'm going to share with you all of the books I acquired this month as well as the five new selections for Book of the Month for October. Really excited for all of them. Book of the Month is so kindly sponsoring this video so thank you so much to them. If you don't know about Book of the Month they are a monthly book series and there are five new book selections at the beginning of each month and you can pick one of them for yourself or you can skip a month however you want to do it. They have a plethora of genres. They always try to do multiple genres in one month. They'll usually have mysteries, they'll have a romance, probably, fantasy, literary fiction. Um, they do a lot of nonfiction as well. So they really just try to cover all of the genres, you know, alternating months and everything like that. And they're awesome with release and debut authors and as well as giving you like sneak peek, like early releases of books sometimes a month in advance. So that is really awesome. Book of the Month is $14.99 a month. But in case you are interested in trying Book of the Month for your very first month, you can use the code BOOKUP to get your first book for only $9.99, which honestly, is a great price. And what's also great of Book of the Month is you can skip months. So in case the five selections come out, you're not feeling them, you can go ahead and skip that month and you won't have any sort of repercussions. Your just credit will go on to the next month after that. You can also select books that have been previously on Book of the Month. They have a whole section on their site dedicated to books that were previously on Book of the Month. So in case you missed out on one months ago, you can get it this month. So I will leave all the links down below for you to check out Book of the Month. I have used their service for years and I really enjoy them and I really enjoy the selections they put out every month, including this month. I'm really excited to share with you the five selections that are coming out this month with Book of the Month. The first selection is one I've already read and that is The Invisible Life of Addie LaRue by V.E. Schwab. This is her newest release. I believe it's a standalone, I'm not sure. All I will tell you about this book is that it is an adult fantasy book about a character named Addie LaRue who was born in the 1700s and she is meant to get married and she wants more from this life so she makes a bargain with a demon pretty much that she will live forever but there are repercussions of that. She is immortal yes but everyone that meets her forgets her name. Like if you meet her one second and then you turn around, you'll immediately forget her. So she's been walking the earth for centuries and nobody knows who she is. And then 300 years passes and somebody finally remembers her name. And it's kind of the story of that. I really enjoyed it. It's fantastical. It also has romance in it. I love this one a ton. Would highly recommend checking this one out. Next up we have Ties That Tether by Jane Igaro. Hopefully I pronounced that right. I believe this is a debut novel and I'm very excited to read it. I know it's a romance but it's a hard-hitting romance at that. So basically in this book we have a woman that's a Nigerian woman and her family really wants her to marry a Nigerian man but she falls in love with a white man and it, the whole book is about her trying to decide is she going to choose love or is she going to choose family and is there an in between with that. I think it's going to be an amazing hard hitting romance that will probably make me swoon and simultaneously cry. Just in time for Halloween we have Magic Lessons by Alice Hoffman. I'm sure a lot of you guys have heard of the book and the movie Practical Magic with Sandra Bullock and Nicole Kidman. I really love it. There's books about it. She's done I think two of them maybe. This one is is the prequel to Practical Magic. So this one takes place in the 1600s with the Owens family. It, magic Lessons is a celebration of life and love and also a lot of witchcraft and things like that. Really excited to check this one out because I love any sort of witchy book, especially during the October month. Then we have a thriller. We have The Girl in the Mirror by Rose Carlyle. And this says twin sisters identical on the outside, dangerously different on the inside. So basically one sister wants the other identical twin sister's life. And so she kind of manipulates her way into it. And that's all I'll tell you about this one because thrillers are best to go into not knowing a ton. But it sounds intriguing and also very scary. And the last book we have, I believe it's kind of a mystery and a literary fiction all in one and it has Leave the World Behind by Ruin Alam. And so this one is all about this couple Amanda and Clay who head out to a remote island of Long Island and they go to vacation and then they rented this house for a week but then um, a late night door knock is an older couple who claimed to own the home and that they came back because there's been like this huge thing happening in New York so they have to go home and so it says should Amanda and Clay trust this intruding couple and vice versa what happened back in New York is the vacation home isolated from civilization truly a safe place for their family and are they safe from one another attuned to the complexities of parenthood class and race it also just really reminds me of a very scary movie but also makes you think a lot like obviously a psychological thriller so this one also sounds 
it's really intriguing and it's very short so it's probably gonna be really super scary. <laughs> so those are the five book of the month selections for October if you want to check any of them out and try book of the month for your very first time. The links will be down below. Now getting on to the rest of the books I acquired this month. So I only bought one book this month because my birthday is at the end of September so I got some money and some gift cards so you best believe I've already ordered some more books. They're just not here yet. <laughs> but the one book I have bought is One by One by Ruth Ware. This is her, I don't know, sixth, seventh book, something like that. And I didn't like it. I read it this month. I did a whole review there where I did talk about multiple books. And this is one of my least favorite Ruth Ware books. I can't just find my rhythm with her. Anyway, you're not here to hear my opinions on it. You're here, you're here to hear what it's about. So this book basically is like takes place in like the Swiss Alps. They have this cabin and this um, company, this tech company rents it out for the week so they can go on a retreat and figure out if they want to sell their company. And then of course murder happens and avalanches and intrigue, oh my. And it was boring. Moving on. The rest of the books I was so graciously sent by publishers and book boxes, so thank you so much to them. First up, from Random House, I have Majesty by Catherine McGee, which I also read this month. And this is a sequel to American Rules, which I really enjoyed. The best way I describe this series, it's Gossip Girl meets Royalty. It's basically if George Washington decided not to be president, but rather be the king of America. And we follow many, many years later, many slew of characters in this book. One being the Princess Patrice, who's going to, you know, be next in line for the throne. Own. Then we follow her sister who's kind of a party animal. Then we follow a girl that's conniving to get into royalty. Then we follow um, her sister's best friend. So a lot of different perspectives. It's addicting. It's fun. It's like it could be a great TV show probably. <laughs> my Alcrate box, another book I read this month. So my TBR shelf, it's getting a little more acceptable of me. I'm not putting as many books on it. We're coming to an understanding in our relationship, at least I hope. That is Horrid by Katrina Leno. This is a YA horror I would dare say. <laughs> this is a very weird and ominous book but I really enjoyed it. So in this book we follow a character named Jane and Jane's father has just passed away. Jane and her mom and her father lived in LA and her father passes away so they run out of money and they have to move to her mother's hometown back in Maine to this really really small um, town and they have to move back into her mother's old home where her grandmother used to live before she passed away and it's like old and dilapidated and her mother is starting to like keep secrets from her about the house, about her past, and there's rooms that Jane can't go in, and then the creepy things start happening, and that's all I'll tell you. I think it's well worth a read, honestly. Next up from Wednesday Books, I have The Gilded Wolves and the sequel The Silvered Serpents by Roshana Shosky. I have yet to read either of these. I need to read them. This I know The Gilded Wolves is kind of about like very Six of Crows-esque where it's about an unlikely team of like heist people and they have to steal something I think in 1889. I believe it's in Paris as well. I could be a thought. Yeah, Paris. Obviously there's an Eiffel Tower on it. I, I could put two and two together. Um, and it says together they will join as he explores the dark glittering heart of Paris. What they find might change the course of history, but only if they can stay alive. I've heard good things about it. I really want to read it, but we all know my my lack of YA fantasy reading. Next up, I have one from Cork Books, and that is The Remaking by Clay McLeod Chapman. And this is, is inspired by True Events. I did not see that because I read the back of this book and I was like, that's intriguing. I didn't know it was inspired by true events. So this is a true crime story. So basically in the 30s, there was this woman named Ella Louise and she had a daughter um, and they're dragged from their home in the middle of the night. And Ella is accused of using her apothecary for witchcraft. And so um, they pretty much kill them. And Ella Louise's burial site's never found. But the little girl has the most famous grave in the South, a steel reinforced coffin surrounded by a fence of white crosses. Why? That's already creepy. So then this legend is told around campfires in the 1950s and then this guy and this guy makes a movie about it and he cast a girl named um, Amber in the, in the 70s as a horror movie and then they're making a remake of it and so it's like a whole full circle of a horror movie. It sounds really intriguing and I'm even more scared to read it now because it's based on true events and it takes place in Virginia which is where I live. Scary. Then another scary novel because tis the month. Um, the Nesting by C.J. Cook. So this is about a guy that's an architect, Tom Faraday, who is, he's building like this friendly home in Norway, like on the cliff, which I don't know why anyone would decide that's a friendly home. But either way, he lost his wife. And so he hires this nanny and named Lexi to take care of his two daughters. And Lexi suspects that 
his wife did not kill herself and that they are all in danger from something far more sinister lurking around them. So really creepy on an island, I think, on a cliff, two young kids. Why? You know, we talked about Halloween books. Let's talk about Christmas books because I also love some of those. The first one I have is All About Us by Tom Ellen. Um, so this one is, I don't know much about this one, honestly. It's about a guy named Ben whose marriage with Daphne is on the rocks and then his, um, and then everything changes on Christmas Eve when he gets a chance to like go back in time with his first girlfriend. So he's got a chance basically to make a decision all over again. Will he be with his wife Daphne or will he go back with his old flame Alice? So. It's about love, loss, and heartbreak, and how the help with a little magic, it's never too late to find the one that you've been searching for. So it's gonna be a big love triangle during Christmas time. Sounds magical and sad. <laughs> Next up, we have A Princess for Christmas by Jenny Holiday. This one is about um, a holiday fairy tale about a tough New Yorker from the other side of the tracks who falls for a princess from the other side of the world. That sounds cute, and that's all I think I need to know about it because it's Christmassy. And the last one is One More for Christmas by Sarah Morgan. This one is all about two sisters that love Christmas, celebrate it every year together, and this year they're celebrating it with their estranged mother who they haven't talked to in like over five years. So it's all about family and reconnecting, which I think make great Christmas books in my opinion, like holiday esque books, like reconnecting a family. So heartwarming. From Simon, I have All This Time by Nikki Daughtry and Rachel Lipicon. I believe these are the people that wrote Five Feet Apart, so I'm guessing this is gonna be super sad. Goodness me, they write sad books. I don't, I ha can't, I have to be in the mood for sad books, which is almost usually never nowadays. <laughs> Next up from the author herself, I got sent The Savior's Sister by Jenna Morishi. Um, she wrote the first book in this called The Savior's Champion, which I actually read and I really enjoyed. So I believe this one is the companion novel to it and I'm really excited to check it out. It's a big one. It's an adult fantasy as well. I do read some of those, even though I don't read YA fantasies. Why? I don't know. <laughs> and the last book I have to share with you is also from Simon and that is Sia Martinez and the Moonlight Beginning of Everything by Rachel Falquest Gilliand. And so this one I don't know a ton about. Um, so it's about Sia's mom who's disappeared and she wants to move on. Um, and then one night on a million star Sia's life and the world as she knows it cracks wide open because a blue lit spacecraft crashes in front of Sia's car and it's carrying her mom. So this is like an alien book but a contemporary alien book? Cause I'm being intrigued. Here you have it. Those are all the books I acquired this month. Quite a lot, but I'm happy to say that I've read a good majority of them and I'm planning to read a good majority of this month. So again, my TBR shelf can breathe a sigh of relief. One can hope, at least I will. <laughs> if you haven't checked out Book of the Month, again, links will be down below for you to check out. I highly recommend you do so. And thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in my next video. Bye.